toggle off down the track to the office and come to the office at a certain time. So in this way, they live out their day. Because they're getting paid for that. Money is not. So we must ask ourselves, why are we in this Krishna consciousness movement getting up early in the morning and taking a shower and uh, wearing this Vaishnava apparel, applying tea to the body, chanting our rounds, attending Mangalarti, and all these activities. Why? What is the motivation? So if we are Rupanuga, if we are actually following in the footsteps of Sri Rupa Goswami, the answer is, so we are doing it for Krishna. We are doing it because we have already even at this stage, writing our thesis stage, some attraction, some attachment, some appreciation for Krishna and Krishna's devotees and devotional activities. And Srila Prabhupada said, this in itself is love. It's already love of Krishna. When someone objected to Prabhupada, they have no love of Krishna. Prabhupada said, no, am I paying you? You're getting a check every week? Oh yes, you're a... Every day attend a, attended Mangalart. Very good. So you get a check from the moon. <laughs> Sixteen hours every day? Oh yes. Sometimes in these society devotees, 
with the scene where a person to enter. And they're acting very uh, enthusiastically. I mean, with apparent enthusiasm. But also just to draw attention to themselves. Just for recognition, for promotion. For some gaining some advantage. And sometimes we're, we see there are, uh, there are those who are engaged in devotional service simply because they have nowhere else to go. <laughs> they can't get on anywhere else in, the, in life. So they're taking shelter here with the discard and they're going through the duties because that, would, that is what is expected of them. Kind of a social thing. Just like if you're, again, part of the society out there, then there are social expectations you have to fulfill. You have to dress in a certain way. You have to have a job. You have to live according to a certain standard. If you're too much different from the rest of society, then they think you're weird. And they don't want you to be around. And they can shut you up in the madhouse if you're too far out. <laughs> so, so there's so someone wants to get along in karmic society, he has to at least he may be crazy, but <laughs> at least externally he tries to act like everyone else so that they don't notice that he's completely bonkers, he's completely insane. And then everyone leaves him alone. So sometimes it is seen also within our society, unfortunately. There are those who are just tagging along with the rest, uh, acting as the others do, so that they won't be recognized as being totally out of them. <laughs> and they won't be asked to leave. <laughs> you think you should go home now. <laughs> But you see, you can't, you, you may be able to, like this is old saying, you can, uh, what is it? You can fool some of the people all of the time. And you can fool all of the people some of the time. But you can't fool all of the people all of the time. So that's a fact, also within the society of devotees. You can pretend enthusiastic, strict followers of the sadhana and bhakti process. You can pretend to be very uh, enthusiastic for a particular service. But if there's no genuine attraction, no genuine taste, no genuine feeling of love for Krishna, for the Guru, for the spiritual master, for Krishna's devotees, if that is not there, then sooner or later, the mask will come off. Srila Prabhupada said that Krishna, just as he is very eager to glorify his sincere devotee, as I said, sincere devotee can mean simple devotee, not very intellectual devotee, but he has some love in his heart for Krishna. So Krishna is very eager to glorify such a devotee, to exalt such a devotee, to show the world that this devotee, and this person is very dear to me. Because he actually has some feeling in his heart. And that's why. This, this is what Krishna likes. This is what attracts Krishna. It's not mechanical expertise. Krishna is the most expert prophet. Krishna is the most expert scientist. Without any effort, he manifests, as we explained, all these universes and everything inside of them. And simply because we can build, we're experts in wiring some machine or something. Oh, yeah, but I can't. Very expert. <laughs> Don't think that that impresses Krishna. Because that ability comes from Krishna in the original place. It's invested. It's invested in us for some time. But the ability, Krishna says, I'm the ability in man. So it's not. Pleasing Krishna is not a matter of external uh, material expertise. 
easy. Krishna is a man of devotion. So one who does, so uh, as I was saying, Prabhupada said that the one who is sincere, Krishna is very eager to glorify him. And Krishna is just as eager to expose the insincere. One who is just making a show, just puttering along in life, staying with the crowd, <laughs> but who is actually uh, not attracted to Krishna in the heart. Beyond this, oh, there must always be some sort of attraction. Otherwise, you cannot, you cannot enter into the assembly of the devotees. That's, that's also must be mentioned. But once we've come into this association of devotees, uh, we have a responsibility to increase that attraction. By conscious effort. When we chant our 16 rounds, we should be consciously trying to improve that chanting every day. We should be actually trying to taste the nectar of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. We may not be tasting, but at least we should be trying to. Because that is showing real faith and appreciation. The Shastras tell us that Krishna is His holy name. That when we chant our Krishna, appreciation for this and try we should be praying to Krishna within the heart as we're chanting but please uh, appear within the syllables of this holy name we should be trying to have this relationship with the holy name with Krishna try to chant with love and affection As I said, this attempt is very pleasing to Krishna. He will receive But if we're doing it in a dry, stereotyped, mechanical way, just to get along in this society so that no one will criticize us too much, then uh, something else will be cultivated in the heart. If not an increasing mood of devotion to Krishna and something else. A mood of sense gratification, a mood of enjoying one's position in this Hare Krishna movement. A mood of duplicity, cheating. What is the result of offenses? And as the this other mood, this other taste, prakrita rasa, it is sometimes called the rasa, the taste of matter, prakriti. That means he's very much attracted to materialistic sense gratification. So this is all arranged by Krishna. Actually, it is also for the benefit of that person that he's exposed that the mask comes off, everyone sees off. Oh, just, oh, this is horrible. And we've always thought he was a very active, engaged person, doing so many things, and now just seeing it. This is for his benefit too, that he will become serious, to perform his activities for Krishna, <coughs> not for some other ulterior So don't think, just to conclude this, don't think that you get great credit just by being busy. Monkeys are also busy. We should be busy, yes, but for Krishna. The word Prabhupada always said, we should be busy for Krishna. Being busy is no great credit. <laughs> I'm busy. Monkeys are also monkeys. And Prabhupada said, monkeys, yes, they're always busy. And they seem to be very renounced too. They live in a tree. They don't live in a house, they live in a tree.
street. They don't even wear clothes. So enough, they eat their vegetarian, they eat only fruit. They're always engaged in sex. Jumping from branch to branch. One can observe in Vandal, the monkeys. This is their main activity, sex life. So they're busy, they're renounced, living a very simple life. But this is their rasa, this is their taste. Sex. So Shiva Prabhupada said that you can judge your advancement in devotional service to the degree that one is attracted to Krishna and not attracted to sex life. To that degree, he's advancing in spiritual life. And if we find ourselves more attracted to sex than to Krishna, it means something is very wrong in what we're doing, despite all of our busyness. Something is very, very wrong with us. So, we don't want to be embarrassed <laughs> one day when the mask drops off in front of everyone. And we should take steps to change the direction of our attraction. From Maya to Krishna. And that is not, I mean, I, I found sometimes that it's very difficult for some person to understand how to do that. They always ask, but how is it done? But it's actually very simple. Adula Mahatma Bhakta, it's not difficult if you have pure devotion of the soul. We have all the tools, Prabhupada has given us all the tools to practice pure devotion. One simply has to do it. So associate with those. We should associate with the devotees who have this um, pure devotion of the soul. And in their association we will naturally pick it up. It's a natural thing. It's like the old story in that uh, famous book, Tom Sawyer, I think it is, Huckleberry, and Mark Twain, he wrote these books, Huckleberry and Mark Sawyer. Anyway, one of these books, uh, Tom Sawyer was asked by his mother to whitewash the fence. The fence out in front of the house. He was to paint it white. And he thought, why should I do all this myself? But then he thought, but nobody else wants to do it either. So then he devised a plan. He got out the buckets of whitewash, he got the brush, and he was standing out in front of his house. He was whitewashing, whitewashing, very enthusiastically. And one by one, his friends were coming by. And they were looking. And they were saying, oh, Tom, you have to do all this work today. Mm. Well, that's too bad. And he was just whitewashing. What do you mean it's too bad? Great. <laughs> and then the friends were, the more friends were gathered and they were looking. They were looking at each other. Well, he looks like he's having a lot of fun. The crowd got bigger and bigger and bigger. All of his friends, they were standing. Then they started to ask, Tom, could we do this for a while? No. Go away. No, no, Tom, come on. Don't be like that. You're having so much fun. We also want to do it. No, no. I, I'm doing this. Please, Tom. Then they were even offering things. Tom, I'll give you, I'll give you this. If you'll let me do it. I'll give you this. So he was collecting all these things. All right, all right. But not too long. Each one of you, then he, he figured it out that uh, if each one of them did it for a certain amount of time, then the whole fence would be finished. So when that was all set up, then he left. <laughs> to do some nonsense. So his friends were very busy. He whitewashed the whole fence. So this is, of course, this is a mundane sort of example, but. <laughs> It just gives the idea how enthusiasm is infectious. When we see someone who's enthusiastic to do something, 
and naturally we become enthusiastic also. So we're wondering how we become enthusiastic about devotional service in the right way. In other words, enthusiastic to please Krishna. And we have to seek out the association of those who are enthusiastic to please Krishna. And then we will catch that too. So it's a very simple thing. Simple, as Prabhupada said, simple for those who are simple. For those who are crooked, who are deliberately <coughs> making things difficult, then what can we do about that? So I'll stop here. Should we go to our Gita? Are there any questions? something like, just to give an example, uh, to serve Krishna, we may drive a car. So to serve Krishna nicely, driving car, means we should follow all the rules of the road. See, if that's your duty, to be the temple driver then uh, we don't want to see the, the temple car come you know, 
zooming up out of the underground parking lot, flying through the air, you see that spinning out, you know, racing off down the road, side-swiping other cars, and then coming to the, the grocery market at 100 kilometers an hour, smashing through the plate glass window, knocking everything, all the shelves, all the stuff everywhere, and then the devotee gets out and makes a quick purchase, and backs the car up out of the shop, and drives down the road like a mad one again. This will not be accepted as devotional service. So the rules of the road, the traffic laws, I mean that's, you see, they in themselves, that is in itself, that is not connected to Krishna, to Krishna's service. But because the devotee wants to serve Krishna properly, nicely, then he follows the rules of the road for Krishna. And thus, even driving the car, even just stopping at the traffic light, at the red light, he slows down to stop. That's devotional service. He's doing it for Krishna. Perhaps for himself, he might run the red light. If he was, you know, it's as he was before he became a devotee. Perhaps he used to drive like that, not caring. But for Krishna, we must care because we have to represent our movement to the rest of society. So therefore, following these traffic laws becomes bhakti yoga for a devotee. And uh, he may be respected also by the police for that, the traffic police. They may say, oh, we like these Hare Krishnas because they're very good drivers. I don't know if that's actually true. <laughs> I hear in Stockholm, for instance, you get a lot of parking tickets. The authorities have been displeased by that. <laughs> Ideally, Srila Prabhupada said that our men, he once said, our men should be loved for their honesty. Their honest dealings. So it also includes proper driving of car. This is just an example of giving. Now, say there's someone else, uh, a criminal, a drug dealer, So he's driving into downtown Stockholm with a load of cocaine and he wants to sell it, but he doesn't want to get caught by the police. So he's also driving very carefully because he doesn't want police to you know, stop him because he ran the red light and look in the car and see all the drugs. So he's driving very carefully. But this, this is not pleasing Christians. <laughs> now he may be at the same red light with the devotee, you see. And when the light turns green, then they both, both the devotee and the drug dealer are driving off very carefully. <laughs> with identical concern for traffic safety. But one is pleasing Krishna, and the other is not. The other is going to hell. Although both are following the same traffic rules. Very nice. So this is like the difference between one who follows the rules of karma yoga for Krishna and one who follows the rules of karma yoga just as exactly, just as precisely, but for something else, for his own sense verification. It's like the difference between devotee driving and drug dealer driving. Both are driving car following traffic rules for completely different motivation. <clears throat> All right. Since you have your karma to do, we'll just stop this class. Shilpa Bhagavad Gita.